Hi guys, Rachel Cook, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some research that might have just unlocked the secret to reversing hearing loss from loud noise. Coming up. Now, noise-induced hearing loss can be caused by loud sounds of any kind, but is especially common in loud work environments and with noisy hobbies. As one of the most common workplace hazards, it is estimated that nearly 15% of Americans between 20 and 69 years old have hearing loss due to loud noise exposure. Major players in this rising statistic include manufacturing, construction, agriculture, mining, transportation, and the military. But our own leisure activities can be dangerously noisy as well. Things like target shooting, driving off-road vehicles, woodworking, going out to bars or clubs, and attending concerts or music festivals. But being around dangerous levels of noise often comes at a cost and can result in temporary or permanent hearing loss, tinnitus, and even hypersensitivity to sound. In fact, after just one afternoon with improperly worn hearing protection at an indoor shooting range, my patient went from mild to moderate high frequency hearing loss to moderate to profound levels of hearing loss across the board. As he describes it, he says, I never knew that that morning would be the last morning that I would be able to hear normally ever again. Unfortunately, this story is one of dozens that I have gathered from my patients over the years, some even trying to wear hearing protection about the serious effects of loud noise on their hearing. And present treatment options for loud noise exposure are limited, often including hearing evaluations before and after either oral or injected steroids. But even this treatment, aiming to reduce inflammation and the immune response, is somewhat controversial given the fact that research in this space is fairly limited. But what if I told you that breakthrough research just found an extremely promising method to reduce damage from loud noise exposure and could even lead to ways to reverse it? All that and more is coming right up, but if you could please take a second to give this video a thumbs up, it really helps bring videos like these to a wider audience. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. Now, I wanna take a moment to explain why loud noise damages our hearing in the first place. Sound is a vibration that travels through the outer ear, the eardrum, and the three middle ear bones before ending up in the cochlea, your hearing organ. Inside of the cochlea, there's a ton of fluid and a membrane lined with thousands of delicate hair cells. These hair cells take the sound vibrations and boost them, making the membrane move, and with enough movement, sending that sound signal up to your brain. Depending on the loudness of the sound and just how long you are exposed, the hair cells in the cochlea can become damaged or even destroyed. Because of the way that this membrane is organized and the way that our own ear canals boost sound vibrations, this primarily impacts the hair cells in the high pitch regions. However, in more serious cases, this can impact hair cell function across nearly all frequencies. Either way, this damage limits the amount of sound vibrations able to make it from the ears up to the brain, resulting in hearing loss. Now, noise-induced hearing loss can either be temporary or permanent depending on the circumstances, but either shift confirms loud noise damage. And even if your temporary hearing loss recovers, repeated exposures to loud noise are much more likely to result in permanent changes to your hearing. Noise-induced hearing loss is diagnosed by a comprehensive hearing evaluation, often revealing a characteristic noise notch somewhere between three and 6,000 hertz. This type of hearing loss is sensory neural in nature, meaning the best and only treatment option is well-fit hearing aids or, in cases of severe hearing loss, cochlear implants. Noise-induced hearing loss can be prevented by the consistent and correct use of hearing protection, whether it be foam earplugs, over-the-ear muffs, or custom hearing protection, and by limiting your loud noise exposure whenever possible. But in many cases, there may not actually be time to prepare, like in the event that the airbags went off in a car accident. For these individuals, their only treatment option at the moment is immediate assessment by an audiologist and an ENT physician for potential steroid intervention. But results from a recent study out of the University of Washington School of Medicine could change this entirely. Their findings suggest that zinc 
could actually be preventing recovery of the damaged hair cells in the cochlea after loud noise exposure. You see, zinc is normally found bound to certain proteins within the human body, with only a small amount operating unbound and on their own, called labile zinc. Normally, labile zinc plays an important role in transferring sensory signals. However, researchers theorize that after loud noise exposure, labile zinc becomes dysregulated and starts to actually cause further cell degeneration. Unstable labile zinc has already been found to be a major player in other sensory injuries, like strokes and vision loss from optic nerve injuries. In this study, researchers aimed to see if trapping this free-floating zinc through a process called chelation could help prevent damage from loud noise exposure. To do this, they injected mice with a gel-like substance to stabilize the labile zinc two days before a two-hour, 100-decibel rock concert. Because hearing can be assessed through brain waves, the researchers were able to evaluate the hearing of the mice who did receive the injection and compare it to the ones that did not. They found that mice who had the injection suffered significantly less noise damage than the ones who did not, even two weeks after exposure. The results of this treatment are extremely promising, and with time and testing, could very well turn into a preventative treatment for loud noise damage. And while a preventative treatment for noise-induced hearing loss is great, a treatment to reverse noise damage after the fact would be astounding. Researchers highly suspect that the dysregulated labile zinc can actually cause further damage even days after the loud noise exposure. They hypothesize that chelation even after the fact could potentially reverse or at least stop further damage from occurring. This application could help prevent noise-induced hearing loss in millions of people after loud noise exposure. Now, researchers certainly have their work cut out for them as they have to prove its effects, validate its safety, and begin human drug trials. And until then, your only options to prevent against noise-induced hearing loss are to use hearing protection and control your exposure. Hearing protection is available in a variety of styles. In-ear hearing protection includes single-use foam and rubber earplugs that are cheap, easy to keep around, and are generally one-size-fits-all, but can be easy to insert incorrectly, leaving you exposed. So for a step-by-step -step instruction of how to use these correctly, be sure to check out Dr. Cliff's video that I'll have linked in the description below. Over-the-ear hearing protection like earmuffs are fairly inexpensive, reusable, easy to wear correctly, and can come in sizes for all ages. But in my opinion, the best long-term hearing protection is custom hearing protection. These result in not only a fantastic fit, but can result in a higher level of protection because they form such a custom fit to your own ears. The higher price point pays for itself in quality, and because they are often made with durable silicone, they last for years. The other way to prevent noise-induced hearing loss is by controlling your exposure. Noise damage stacks up over time, and combined with age-related hearing decline, it can end up really compromising your ability to hear. This is why it is so important to limit your loud noise exposure whenever and wherever you can. First, lower the volume. This includes playing music through speakers, in the car, or through headphones. If you can't or won't lower the volume, you'll need to limit your exposure time or increase your distance from the sound. According to the National Institute on Occupational Safety and Health, sounds at 85 decibels are safe to listen to for an eight hour period, but each three decibel increase cuts this time in half. For example, a 90 decibel motorcycle would have a safe exposure limit of about two hours, while a 110 decibel rock concert would only be safe for about three minutes. If you don't have it already, I would highly recommend downloading the NIOSH Sound Level Meter app so you can take a quick measurement of your surroundings and know when your ears are at risk. If you're at a sports game, a concert, or a nightclub, you stand little chance at being able to control the volume of the sound or your distance from the sound, which means you're gonna need to think ahead and pack hearing protection. If you suspect that you already have noise-induced hearing loss, or if you experienced a change in your hearing or tinnitus after a loud noise exposure event, you need to be seen for a comprehensive hearing evaluation by an audiologist. During this evaluation, your hearing is assessed and treatment options are discussed. 
For many with noise-induced hearing loss, the best and only treatment option is properly programmed hearing aids that can return your access to missing speech sounds and reduce communication difficulties. But optimal treatment outcomes for this type of hearing loss and really any type of hearing loss requires finding a hearing healthcare professional who will follow comprehensive best practices. If you want an easy way to find a provider who follows best practices, be sure to check out hearingup.com to find a HearingUp network member near you. Overall, this research is an exciting development in preventing noise-induced hearing loss and could help support a way to reverse noise-induced hearing damage after the fact. Until then, be sure to protect your hearing, limit your loud noise exposure whenever and wherever you can, and treat the hearing loss you already have with a provider you trust. That's it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share it with someone that you feel could use it. And of course, if you have not yet already, make sure you hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos.